welcome back to our discussion this evening. We have a fantastic topic to look at today that is titled Chosen and Appointed. And you will agree with me that that song of worship is just very appropriate as to how God is just perfect in all of his ways. He has everything in control and in fact, he has chosen and appointed us. So tonight, we want to just dive into that discussion about chosen and appointed. And like I said, I've got in the studio tonight, Pastor Christine Bamigbola, to dissect and open up this discussion. If, if, if I may start this discussion tonight, um, I wasn't in church last Sunday, but I have since heard the message that you shared. That was exciting. That was electrifying, in fact. Um, you were sharing about the new frontiers for greater impact. Um, that was really so good. And this, this will be like a follow-on um, to, that, to that message. I want to just ask tonight, when I listened to that message, even today, earlier on today, listening to it, there was a sense of urgency in your tone as you were speaking and delivering that message. Was that deliberate or was that, what was the essence of that sense of urgency that one could pick as you were speaking or sharing on Sunday? Well, good evening once again, everyone. Um, I guess the urgency is from, from um, I mean, I asked a question actually before I sort of started sharing. I asked the audience, the congregation, whether they had heard maybe one or two or three things this year mm. that had alarmed them oh. in the state of play of society yes. and how we live life. And many people raised their hands. Okay. And I think the urgency is coming from the fact that there's just a myriad of things. You know, there's at least one or two things in every sector of society where you hear it and you're just alarmed. Like, I, I mean, did that really happen? Mm. And I, the urgency is following on from the fact that if we, if the salt was enough in the, in the food, broth. <laughs> it would be the, the, the taste would change. Yeah. So we would hear better news. Mm. You know, and, and you know, I guess the urgency is like, you know, brothers and sisters, come on, let's go. Let's 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 you know let's um, let's go do good. Yeah. I almost used the phrase go do good because uh, really, that's really what I was feeling. Oh, good. Feeling. Well, that, that's, that's um, I, I mean, I would like to encourage you. It, it's really such an impactful message that was shared on Sunday. You can visit our um, YouTube channel at TV and listen to the mm -hmm. rest of that message. You will certainly be encouraged, empowered, and you'll be envisioned again when you hear about the new frontier for greater impact. I actually want you to go and try and listen to it um, sometime um, in, the, in the nearest future. Now, talking about, talking about um, how things have become in the society now, in the real sense of things, how bad or how worse mm. has things become when we talk about um, the need for Christians to be salt and light in our generation and also in the community and wherever it is that we find ourselves? Well, I mean, uh, th things have changed. I mean, people will say things like, um, when, when they were children, they used to be able to run around in the streets and just play. Nobody is going to allow their child to do that in this day and age. Yeah. Um, you know, things like, you, maybe, even, even things like etiquette, politeness, mm. simple things. If there's no sign on, on the seat in the train, nobody's going to get up, even if there's an elderly woman almost fainting you yes. know um and that comes from what we what people you know is in the educational system uh things like the sense of citizenship the sense mm. of identity belonging you know um the sense whole, of value sense of value yes um leadership society is lacking you know when it comes to leadership mm. you know all across the, the world um and, and i think that there's just so much in the educational system um, there is just so much. Is it, is it in crime? Is it in, oh gosh, name it, there is, there is something, there's an issue. Wow. And so things have really, really 
moved on. I mean, whether you look back 10 years, 25 years, yeah. certainly 50 years. Um, and yeah, that's why we okay. need to um, rise up. <laughs> good. I, I really want to encourage you. Listen to that message and you will really see how um, perhaps you will look at things differently when you when you check out that message. Okay, let's let's come back to today's title and to this discussion. You know, the, the discussion, chosen and appointed. Mm -hmm. My first question to you tonight is, does God actually choose or appoint people? Mm. Does God choose people? Does he appoint people? Um, does he do both of them? What What is it that God does in that sense? Um. It is interesting because um, God, God loves us all. You know, God, okay. He loves everyone. Um, First Peter two nine says we are all we are His chosen. You know, we are all chosen by Him. Yeah, yeah. But God does. I mean, I, I want to say that God is a master strategist. He's a yeah. master strategist. Mm. And I, you know, when I look at when He was when He saw the darkness over the deep, and He said, "Let there be light." I'm sure no one could have predicted that he was going to end up with making man in his own image and then saying, actually, you have dominion over everything. Mm. So God is looking at a really big picture, complex picture, and then he's choosing. So when I look at, he just chose Abraham, and then he's saying, you know, I will make you a great nation. I will make your descendants as the sand of the seashore. That's a lot of people. Um, and then he establishes covenant with him. It's choosing Mary. But then, so I, I think God does choose because, and he does it for a reason. I was going to say, why does, for a why does he choose? Yes. God chooses for a reason. So he doesn't just choose a favorite or anything. He, chose, he looks at the plan and he says, okay, how best can we begin to arrange this? Mm, mm. And he's, he, he has some uh, criteria before he chooses. So someone like Mary, he's looking at purity. Um, when he chose Abraham, he's looking at perhaps a heart of obedience as mm. likely to obey, walk with him. Um, when he chose the nation Israel, um, out of all the nations, he wanted a nation that will, I guess, model how he wanted nations to be, mm. to relate with him. So uh, God does choose, um, but it's for a bigger plan, uh, mm. a bigger purpose, and in the end, many people benefit from it. So that means yeah. God chooses for a particular purpose. So yes. there's, a, there's something that God wants to achieve or is alluding to. He will now go on and search and pick and choose someone or some, I mean, someone to fit yes. into that design. Wow, that is, that is so good. So there's something that God could have chosen me for or chosen you for. Yes. Um, and all of us have a place in God if, if that is what I hear our guests speaking about tonight. Now, what are the characteristics, if we mm. come to that, what are the characteristics that qualifies a person to be chosen mm. or to be appointed? Wow. Well, to be, to be chosen, I mean, if I deal with the chosen first, okay. um, like I said, that, you know, God would have a plan in mind. Mm. So he's, he's, he looks at the purity, for example, in the case of Mary. He looks at the purity. Um, the other example, which is actually in this, earlier in that same chapter, in, in Luke chapter 1, is uh, Zechariah. Zechariah was serving, and God was looking for someone who is serving him. Diligent diligently, serving, yeah. Through which he then wanted to bring, you know, his prophet, you know, he to, co to come. Um, so he's looking at that. Um, when he said, okay, separate me. Uh, Paul and Barnabas for the work I've called them to. He's looking at perhaps their heart of service as well, their commitment. Um, you know, like I said, with Abraham, he was looking at someone likely to walk in obedience with him. Um, yeah, so God is he's sort of looking at characteristics that at least they're a starting point oh. to say, okay, from here. Okay. Um, and then when it comes to appointed, I mean, likely there's, a, there's an amount of time in between being chosen before that assignment gets played out in, that we can now say yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. appointed time, appointment. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's also when the person is chosen, will they walk with God until that thing that he wants done 
mm. gets done. So with Abraham, he chose him. He said, come out of where you are. Then he let some time go by. Then he asked, asked him to do something again. Then he, another some time left and until he was sure. I mean, <laughs> he even asked him to sacrifice his own son as well. Yeah. And then he was really sure. I mean, the Bible says Abraham believed God. I mean, he so believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. So it, it, it was then clear that, yes, my covenant is with you. Genesis 17 then says, yes, the covenant is with you mm. and, you know, for all the descendants to come. So I, I think it's, um, it's a case of, yes, some certain criteria to start with, the passage of time, and then when the time comes, is the person still, I guess, um, ready for, for God to be the one, okay, I mean, the one to be used? Yeah. I don't know whether the same is happening to, to our guest, um, sorry, to, to our audience, um, wherever they are. I was, look, I was hearing you speak about the qualities, and they all seem very positive and yeah. right. What can God choose someone yeah. with some negative kind of character? Because mm. in some cases, let me give an example like, like a Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus. Yes. And um, if a man was chosen yeah. or was appointed for a particular purpose, I mean, this guy was chosen. I mean, he yes. was loaded eventually. Yeah. But we didn't know that. In the first instance, he, he was all over the place doing some very dangerous, wicked stuff. Persecuting Christians. Yes, persecuting Christians. So yeah. could he have been chosen for being yeah. wicked? Yeah. Well, how do we place that? That is interesting. Um, God, I mean, God, I mean, uh, like I said, God is a master strategist. Yes. And um, his first experience was, you know, being stopped suddenly, going blind. Yes. And then God having a conversation with him. Yes. And then him saying, yes. So, actually, he, he grafted himself into, I mean, it's as though he was identified. Because sometimes, you know, as human beings, God made us. Mm. And the, the passion sometimes that we use for the wrong thing. Yes. God initially meant it to be used for, for the a good right thing, thing. For the good thing. Wow. So, he, God knew that if Paul, you know, Saul of Tarsus, was to agree after becoming blind, to go on errand for God, oh, then he knew. He would go all the way. He knew he would go all the way. And God he did, he and did go all the way. And he did, he did so go all the way. I, I think it's, 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 it's exactly like that. Wow. Um, I mean, even things like um, going to, to eat in Zacchaeus' house. Yes. It's like, you know, but then he, he could see the eagerness in Zacchaeus. Yes. Like, wow, you would cry, climb the top of a tree to, mm. just to see mm. me going by. Mm. Today mm. I'm going to eat in your house. Amen. So I, I think it's God can choose someone who is so far removed. Mm. The most unlikely, you see, the Bible says he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Wow. And so God can use even, even someone who looks like the, the least unlikely. That is, so, yeah. that is so comforting to hear because yeah. I'm, I'm looking at myself and, you know, and maybe you are there also, you're looking at yourself, the weaknesses, the, the fact that there are so many things that you don't do right, the mistakes you make. And all of us make, and you're thinking, can really God ever use me? And what you're saying tonight is that there's hope for all of us in that if God could use Saul of Tarsus, wow. yes. and he became the person who, who wrote to third of the New Testament, mm. then God can use you. I hope you're hearing that. I don't know what you're thinking about, about yourself. Maybe you've disqualified yourself. Maybe people have disqualified you. Mm. People have made you feel as if... God can never use you. You're good for nothing. God cannot even look in your direction. Mm -hmm. That is a lie of the, from the pit of hell. You need to believe that God can use you. In fact, he wants to use you. He designed you for a purpose. And I know that God will fulfill that very essence in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Wonderful. I really so enjoy this discussion. And maybe we should go for a break briefly. And then we'll return and continue this discussion. Don't go away. You might just go and grab um, a drink or whatever it is and return and we can continue. Let's just go on a short break and we'll be back to continue the discussion. See you soon. Hey you. Hey, you. Yeah. yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Did you know that you were chosen by God? Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And yeah, I had kind of a hard day at school today because at recess, I got picked last for dodgeball. Yeah, and I never get picked last because I'm, I'm pretty good at catching the ball. I, I love playing the goalie in soccer, and if we're playing dodgeball, I just 
catch the ball like I'm playing soccer. But, uh, well, I have kind of a weakness, and I think everybody figured that out, is that, uh, you know, normally I can catch the ball, yeah, but if there's more than one ball coming at me, I just go, <gasps> and I freeze, and I get hit by all of them, and, and I'm out right away. And so now they just throw more than one ball at me, and so I got picked last. And that, that felt really bad. I didn't like being picked last. I used to get picked first. And it, it made me start to think, because, you know, nobody likes to get picked last. But, but... Did you know that you, yeah, God chose us special. We are his special possession. We are God's favorite. All of us are. And you might say, well, no, if everybody is God's favorite, then nobody's God's favorite. No, it doesn't work like that. You are God's favorite you. And I'm God's favorite me. We were chosen by God. God picks us first every time. And so I may not be picked first in dodgeball anymore, and, and maybe I might not get picked first for other things in my life, but I can know that God will always choose me first. You know, Jesus loves us so much that he even died for us. Yep, he gave his own life so that we could live with him forever in heaven. That's how far Jesus would go to show us that he chooses us. And I think that that is really, really amazing. And I hope that you will understand deep down inside that you are chosen and valued by God. Hey, so I hope you liked this video. I worked really hard on it. And you know, my whole goal, the whole reason why I make these videos is because I want to tell as... Yes, you're welcome back from that break, um, and I hope you enjoyed Douglas Douglas's talk and um, being chosen, and the fact that none of us enjoy being chosen last, or uh, you know, qualifying for something last. But that should not disqualify you. In fact, that you came last should not be a disqualification. It should be the fact that you are just being set right in your place of capacity in your place of appointment in the place where you can flourish the best wonderful and i hope you did enjoy that please um, share that with especially the children so they can know how to reflect on this amongst their mates and amongst their peers wow let's come back to our discussion tonight and we're talking this evening about being chosen and being appointed and my next question in this second segment is, once you are chosen, are you automatically appointed? Is it, does it link directly that once you've been chosen, you're going to be appointed um, directly? Um, yeah, I mean, you're somebody who is into HR or whatever it is, and then you, once you're offered a, a, a job, do you get started? If you might look at it that way, how does it flow? It's interesting, um, Pastor, that you use that example because <laughs> um, when the person has actually, uh, out of all the candidates and in the interview, um, well, first of all, there are some people that their CV comes forward and mm. they're not even part of those who are interviewed. Yes. And then out of those who are interviewed, one is selected, but that's not the end of it. There's a Correct. probation period. Absolutely. There's a probation period before they are now the the, the one. Full up, the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but actually, Pastor, I, I wanted to. There's something you mentioned earlier where you said um, being chosen last, and as you were saying that, what really came to my mind is someone might be there who is also not young this time, but o much older. Mm. The example that we use in Abraham is actually an example who was someone who was well worn in years yes, and yeah. Zechariah as yes, well so yes. please also don't let that put you off mm -hmm. coming back to that this question though um god is going to he's going to use um people who uh, during after the time he's chosen them they also fulfill so he starts off with certain criteria and then there's still something they need to do so i look at the the example of the 10 virgins 
they were there. Mm -hmm. The lamps were there. But then, five of them ended up not making it. Wow. They ended up not making the mark. Um, I noticed that in, in Luke chapter 1, like I said earlier, when the angel delivered the message to Zechariah, mm. because Zechariah was questioning the angel and was going towards trying to discredit the prophecy, <laughs> he ended up being made <laughs> mute. So actually, that means that he needed to have some faith for the thing to actually happen. Absolutely. So the angel said, "No, do you know what? Before you undo what he we are to trying keep to his do, mouth short. let us get you to be <laughs> just be mute until it happens." Yes. And so there is still uh, there is uh, still you know conditions to to meet mm. even until they appoint. I mean, Habakkuk two, two says the vision, the mission, the assignment is for an appointed time. Absolutely. Ecclesiastes three says. There is a time um, for every purpose, purpose yes. under heaven. So there is a set time. I mean, we've just done Pentecost. You know, it says there in Acts two, when the time had fully come. Mm. So the disciples had been following Jesus, following Jesus, but God helped the person who was in that, in that room that day, when the when the Holy Spirit mm. was going to come upon them. So I, there is some criteria to still fulfill until the time the actual time itself that heaven has, you know, ordained. Um, so that, what is it, the Kairos time? Or the, the Kairos the, time, yes. Yes, yes you know, so yes. It, it, there's a time in heaven when it's really supposed to happen. It needed to be that not only did, should Mary carry Jesus, the baby, um, in pregnancy, but that he was also born at a particular time, mm. which is why the Magi were checking the stars yes. to see exactly when he would be. So there is a, a, a defined time a, a, an ordained time for these things to happen and if you're chosen by God you need to walk with God until that set time to actually fulfill the assignment that he wants you to, to do amen yeah. amen so so I mean is so it's actually possible for one to be chosen mm. but then from the example you made about the 12 virgins mm. and not get appointed eventually mm. yeah. and that that would be a very sad position to be mm. to have gone that far yet not make the mark mm. um, and is carelessness mm. or disqualification complacency, or yeah. complacency yep. to getting too excited or just taking things for granted you know might be the reason I mean I, I remember I remember um, getting into university and um, I'm going to university and and the lady who got the best result of us going into university, I mean, she got like nine A stars mm -hmm. into university. Some of us, you know, we struggled, we entered, you know, we, we got in there. Do you know, first semester, she had the most horrible results. Wow. By the end of the first year, she was rusticated out of the university wow. for bad results. Okay. Yet she got the best result to get, to get, to, yeah. to get an entry. So that you mm. quote, that you get in mm. didn't qualify you to finish. Mm. That is what I hear you say. Mm. And that is to say to us that we must be ready to walk all the way with God. Yes. We must be ready to do everything that matters mm. to make sure that we just don't get chosen. Mm. We actually get appointed to fulfilling yes. the criteria and to the, to the assignment to get it done. Mm. Wonderful. I really... Thank you for that, um, for drawing that inference and that um, conclusion for us. Let's let's move on to how do you know if you are chosen, and mm. do you have to accept it? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's an interesting it one. It is an interesting how one. How do you know whether you are chosen? And I, I, I go, we have a God who who communicates with us. Okay. You know, God God doesn't delight in just being mysterious. And we just live life not really knowing. Mm, mm. I mean, the Bible says even in the beginning, he was communing with Adam, you know, yeah. in the garden. So, you know, this, you know, in the times we're in, through the Holy Spirit, um, God would talk to us. But actually, some people may say, well, I don't know how to hear God. I don't know how to hear the, the Holy yeah. Spirit. But the way God would do it is he would, he would, like I, I mean, I actually refer to this on Sunday. He will, certain things will just draw your attention. Mm. And... You may, you may go here, it will draw your attention. You go there, it draws your attention. You go to another thing, it draws your attention. And you begin to think, what's going on? What is going on here? Um, and I, and I, um, I actually have a, a little bit of an example 
um, when, when I was growing up, I was, I, I literally said to, that, to my mom, I do not want to be a lawyer. I don't want to be a lawyer. I'll be an accountant. And I did go on and study accountancy. I okay. became an accountant. But what I found was I had this situation where I was not with my mom. I was here in the UK. And people used to ask me, so are you a lawyer? <laughs> and I just used to find it so funny. And I, and I just thought to myself, do, do they know my mom? Did my mom tell them something? I realized, no, no. It, it just must, there must be something there about maybe talking. I later came to realize maybe there's something, a gift of mm. talking there mm. somewhere. Mm. Mm. So you will find that there might be something on the inside of you that makes you want to do a particular activity or you just, like I said, things catch your attention or God speaks to you or maybe there's a prophecy given mm. to you and someone else who doesn't know some, the same person yeah. says the same thing and you will know that, okay, God is, God is talking to me about doing something in this area for him, um, mm. for his glory. Yeah. I actually heard you on Sunday said something like, you might not know um, what you've been called or chosen to do yeah. or what your assignment is or what you've been appointed to do, but anything that is like your your passion, yeah. just give it attention yes. and do it. If it's your passion, you just find that you love doing this, you love doing that so much so that people are saying, oh, um, if, it's, if, it's to, if it's to count this, just give it to this person, they, they will count it so accurately. That is beginning to draw your attention towards a particular, so much so anywhere you go, you just find yourself doing the same thing, yes. getting drawn to the same thing. Mm -hmm. That is an inference. That is a direction yes. for you to take note of the fact that you are being drawn to a particular area. And Now, the second question is, do you have to accept it? Ooh, God, will not force, God will not force us. And that's, that's the beauty of it. He has given us that, um, that ability to make a choice, to make yeah. a decision. And, and that's, he's not going to take that back. So the decision to go with it is still going to lie with us. Mm. Um, you know, in our free will. In, in our free will. Yeah. So, w you know, he, he, like I said, if, if it's to make a decision, maybe, to, I mean, in my case, to become a lawyer, and I said no, you know, he's, he's not going to force us. So it, it would take for you to actually decide that I'm going to go with this. I believe there's something God is trying to tell me. And I think what can be a challenge sometimes is if you've already gone said no and gone one way and then you, just, you, you realize that. that oh actually i got it wrong i got it wrong god was actually trying to tell me to go this way to have the humility to change course oh. so you can't say i've been going so far in this direction i might as well continue it's still the wrong way yes you might yeah. as well change course and go in the direction you're supposed to be going yeah and i think it, it, that, at that moment that could mean that you've spent years maybe in one vocation Mm. To now say I'm changing to this, I God has there's now a double sure assurance in my spirit that I, I should have gone this way. So if you're a, if you're a doctor, pastor, I think you used this example once, yeah. and you're always finding yourself <laughs> <laughs> calculating the profit, the, from the, the price of syringe from the syringes <laughs> and the profit you can make. Then you're not supposed to be a doctor before you go and give somebody the wrong injection. Leave yeah. the doctor and go and become. A businessman yeah, instead and yeah. i think it's it's kind of like that god but god will not force us he will leave that if, if abraham had said no you leave him if mary had said no he wow. would have left him wow. if um you know samuel had said no as well as the samuel um he would have left him if paul and banas Saul and ba paul and banas had said no mm. god would have left them um but, but what if that was the very purpose that he created us for, for. and we're saying no mm. like you said is is like chasing the wind mm. and, and and getting things wrong all the way mm. imagine uh, what's his name um the the founder of of kfc ah. at at that mm. age mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he all of after serving in the military yep. after finishing retiring he now eventually discovered the very essence wow. of his creation, thank, thank of, his, of his livelihood. Yes. And look at it today. Everywhere he, you go, you find his name being, re, I mean, be, 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 being, being renowned. Mm -hmm. you know, that's because he eventually found what he was called to be. To be. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. You don't have to accept it, but you see, you, you know, you, 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 I think it's to realize that, yes, God has many other people at his disposal. Mm. And what happens sometimes is people then see someone else oh. 
maybe of a similar age even go and do it and then they realize that ah that's replacement. That, that, is, that is replacement. Oh. And regret comes in. Wow. But my, my prayer is that, you know, God is an amazing God. At the point at which we choose to repent, he will still help us get back on our feet and carry on. I mean... But may, if somebody else has done what he's <laughs> <what> supposed <laughs> to do, he may, he may be... It's, God, God has his own way of doing oh things. Oh, my God. He may, he may give you something slightly similar. Something else. Uh, <laughs> something slightly similar and... Honor the fact that you repented and you, you came back to him. So, well, it, it's, it's, it just highlights the fact that we need to be careful. Yeah. I mean, the example that comes to mind is, is um, uh, William Wilberforce. Yes, yes. Who, who is accredited for leave, leading the movement until virtually almost till he died. Yes. For the abolition of the slave trade. Correct. But he almost did not become a, gov a politician. He almost didn't because his parents were trying to get him off. Like, what are you doing? Coming to London. Coming to London, you know, all, all sorts of things. But he kept, he came back to it. So I think it's to realize sometimes there's actually a serious, I guess, result if, if we don't do it. But God, God is not short of people. Mm, he, he will mm. very likely. And I'm, as, as, you, as you're speaking, as you're speaking, I was just looking at the fact that some of us, and then some of, the, some of our audience tonight um, will have found themselves why they were born where they were born, mm. why they created the way they were created, why they were designed the way they were designed. Mm. Why is it that they were not placed somewhere else mm. where they see somebody, somebody? I mean, a good example is if you look at, I mean, the royal family here, Charles, Williams, and Harry, they, they, they are chosen into the house of Windsor yeah. and the family of the Windsors to be part of the royal family. That is the, that is the design. That is where they were, they were factored to be. Yeah. Can they have rejected it? Or, I mean, Harry, Harry rejected it, said doesn't want to be part of it anymore. But has he really rejected it? He can't, mm. isn't it? Mm. He's just part of it. He's going to go all the way with him. The more you run from it, mm. the more he follows you because that is your destiny. That is what you be. So anything that we've been designed for, chosen for, uh, it follows us until we mm. we actually become that thing, and it's in our good interest, isn't it? And that, I think follow. that I think it's, it's important to actually um, note that point that God doesn't just say I'm choosing you, and and you 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 end up feeling like you've lost. Mm. Mm. God will actually also reward you. He reward you, empower because you. Because he rewarded you. Abraham. Yes. He said, I am your exceedingly great reward. Absolutely. He actually made him so rich as well. Mm. He mm. rewarded Mary. Mary said, blessed am I among all women. Mm. He rewarded Paul. He reward. He, you know, he rewards. God mm. doesn't just give you an assignment and then you do all this work and you end up behind somehow. Mm. No. He rewarded Esther because Esther, she wanted to be queen. When she now got there, she found out there's another she, assignment. Yes, it's like, yes. I did not bargain for this. What is this? But she was rewarded for, you know, for it as well. So even her uncle, Mordecai, I, I think I want to emphasize that when God chooses you, don't, even if you have to change course or direction, he, know that he will reward you mm. even to exceed whatever it is you've sacrificed. Amen, yeah, for him. amen, yeah. amen. My, my, I mean, my, my next question, you've started answering it, which is, what is the benefit of being chosen or appointed? Mm. What is, are, are there, other than what you have said, mm. are there other benefits of mm. being chosen or being appointed that we, we can... I mean, oh, wow. Um, the benefit of actually pleasing God is a good one. Oh, yeah. And the benefit of having fulfillment, you see, if a fish, a fish is a fish, if a fish says, I don't want to be in water, well, oh, that is a oh. that is a serious matter. <laughs> so, the, the, you know, that's fulfillment of actually just being in water, yes. agreeing to be in water, because it's water you were made to be in. Yes. So when you align with God, you are literally aligning with something that makes you feel good and fulfilled. Mm. Because actually, I mean, I know in success these days it's defined in different ways, but actually the success of your life is doing what you were made to do in the first place. And you will find fulfillment in that. Um, and usually what happens is that's the point where you can be the most successful. And people will say, how do you do it? The point is, no, you've aligned with what you were born to do. Amen. So you're gonna, you, you, the way you will succeed, people who are forcing themselves to be in the same 
You know, I know in some cultures, people just like copying somebody else. You say, this is in fashion. Ah, that's, this is what they are doing now. Have you heard? <laughs> is what, this is what they're doing now. No, 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 no. Is it for you? That's the yes, question. Yes. So I, I think there's a, the benefit of fulfillment, the joy of success. Um, you know, the scripture that says, um, you know, so that a man will see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. You never know. When, when I see an eagle, I mean, okay, I saw a squirrel yesterday. Is it yesterday? <laughs> a few days ago. All right. I see a squirrel every day. Every day, okay. <laughs> but what, what I, I really enjoyed is, I, I, I mean, really liked about this squirrel is that it was really enjoying what squirrels do, running yeah, up and yeah, down, yeah. up and down, up and mm, down. Mm. That squirrel, that's what it was made to be to do. Um, and so the benefit is the fulfillment, getting to the highest point of success, yes. pleasing God is a good one. Amen. And I think when we do what we're supposed to do, so many other people benefit. Because God has this way of um, he's interlocking what you're doing with what will affect others. Amen. So that means you are a blessing to all other people. Sometimes you can't tell the extent to which William Wilberforce does not know the extent to which he saved lives mm. because they abolished the slave trade. Absolutely. Some of the people living now are still talking about the pain, but yes. really... <laughs> imagine if there was <laughs> imagine no... Imagine if it wasn't abolished. Yes. So I mean I and um, I, I think that's 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 the benefit of it that you could be a generational blessing beyond what you anyone even um, knows. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And and I think um, there's also a wisdom in being where we are supposed to be because yes. if you are not where you are supposed to be, that means you are somewhere that you're not supposed to be. Yeah. And you can only be only be an obstruction mm. and um, a hindrance mm. to something where you are not supposed to be doing mm. or wherever it is that you are. So wh why not just look at that mm -hmm. and stay in your lane? If I Same can put it that way, yes. stay in your lane so that you can run the race. You can run your race in fulfillment to the reward of your Father in heaven. Amen. Wonderful. I really love I, that. I, I, yeah. As yes. soon as you said that, that reminded me of the talent, mm. the one that actually didn't bury it because not obeying yes. is actually like burying the talent. The, 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 I think Matthew 25, it ended by saying that God said to the one with five talents and two, take the one from that one and give it to him. Yes. And then he also said, enter into the joy of, of your father. So th there's even an added bonus of yes. God even yes. just saying, do you know what? Take, it, take another bit of it again. Mm, mm. So I, 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 yeah, just wanted to add that really. Yeah. I, th I, think was, I mean, they, when, you, when you fulfill when you fulfill what your purpose mm. is, your design is, it's just an overflow of blessings yeah. again and again, again and again. Okay, let's let's try and bring our discussion to a close. I have one one final question, um, a bit on, on, on a personal side. I was going to ask you: over the years, you have you have shown your interest uh, in the area of politics. Um, getting involved in public politics, serving in public life, serving in area of community development and community life. You know, how will you say a Christian, being a Christian, we're supposed to look at politics or our engagement in, in community life or in public office? How should we conduct ourselves? Wow, wow. So it's, a, it's a big question well, right I mean, there. Well, let's, let's learn from what you've it, done for a, for a few years. Um, I, 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 it's exactly, it's, 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 almost, it's quite it's similar to what we're talking about. Yes. Because I found that as I, I there was a way that God made me aware to say, go and do something in the community. Mm. And I was working, I said earlier, I was an accountant, and I was working in that, in global more global organizations and mm. just doing my accounting and all that and I speak a, a couple of other European languages I was doing mm. that but I started to hear God saying community mm. <laughs> what, what are we doing which community is it the European community <laughs> or which community but actually that that led me then to to look into community yeah. and that really was the the beginning as and as I looked into community I ended up changing my work and these days, I actually work empowering, you know, community charities to, to support people, you know, vulnerable families. I mean, mm, mm. about 20 charities at the moment. And then how we govern, how, how the country is governed, how policy is made, I be, that began to catch my attention as well. 
And so I, I put myself forward. Um, uh, I, I, in a way, it was easy because some of the principles of um, leading in public life are actually Christian principles. The, mm. the seven Nolan principles mm. are actually, you know, serving, you know, selflessness, yes. leadership, Sacrifice. you know, yeah, integrity. These yes. are all actually honesty. They're actually all Christian principles. Yes. So in a way, that it wasn't hard to then switch into that. And like I said, um, I think for me there was also, a, a, um, I, I had to juggle this question of, should a Christian even be in public life? Should you even be in government? You know, and I did sort of, you know, juggle that in my mind a bit. But then I realized, God, my father, is the governor over nations. Oh. He's a sovereign God. He, I mean, he says um, he likes justice, you know. He, he, he likes um, the oppressed, you know, getting, you know, not, he doesn't like people being treated badly. Um, his decision to make heaven and earth, that's, that's decision making, that's government. Oh. So I think for me that became, it became easier then. Um, and I think Christians should look at being in government that way that you are just being um, in God's image. You yeah. are doing as God made you to do. Amen. Um, to be there. And like I, on Sunday, I said to be salt as well. And mm. when you are there, just your presence, just something they will ask you that nobody else knows the answer, like yeah. Joseph and Daniel and all that. You will know the answer. A Correct. complex situation. You know, you, so I, I, I think we sh Christians should not shy away from public office. And for me, that's why um, I basically um, went in for public office. So, so, be, so being a Christian actually enhances uh, yes. your service in public life yeah. and should enhance your public life experience. You know, I was listening to a talk today by Bishop Wayne Malcolm, Malcolm. and um, he was talking about the fact that when, when Jesus was saying, I will build my church, mm -hmm. and he was actually saying that I will build my church, and he said the, the original word for church there is a Greek word mm -hmm. that, that actually interprets into the way that the Greek gathers mm -hmm. the community into a public place to actually decide, everybody mm -hmm. will come together and decide, decide how they will govern mm -hmm. the affairs of their community. Mm -hmm. So everybody will bring their ideas. Say that mm -hmm. is the origin of politics. That is the origin of service. Yeah. That is the origin of Christian experience. So God is saying, I will build my mm -hmm. ecclesia, ecclesia, the church, yeah. in a way that we can all come together and see mm -hmm. who can be a representative in the area of marketplace, yes. in the area of health, mm -hmm. in the area of technology, Absolutely. in the area of, the, um, of finance, in the area of, you know, the different places. Yeah. He said, all of us will bring together our ideas into the public place mm -hmm. and we shall offer it sacrificially yeah. for one another so that we can enjoy the fulfillment of governance yeah. wonderful yeah. well thank you so much pastor christine for an exciting discussion this evening i've really enjoyed this time of discussion i hope you have too and i hope you are already thinking about the place or the places of your being chosen of your assignment and the place that God wants to use you in this day and age, in the community, in your career, in your, pub, in, 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 in your office, in your family, on your streets, wherever you find yourself, there is a place that is being set aside for you and for you alone. Remember what um, our, our cartoon said earlier, on. he pointed to you that he's talking to you that you've been chosen and you've been assigned for a peculiar reason. What would be your closing statement to us tonight? If, if you're going to say something to our, our viewers, what would you like to say to them? I would say, um, go, go do good <laughs> um, and uh, yield to God, yield to that, um, that you know, a choosing of God, yield to that appointment, you know, be chosen. As long as you know you are chosen, walk with God all the way um, to actually doing the appointed um, assignment, and um, my prayer is that you will succeed um, in Amen. it, um, as indeed God will help you to do. In Jesus' name, God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's um, finish up tonight by taking an offering. We will always do this um, at any of our meetings, and we'd like to encourage you, if you belong to um, part of this house, or you believe in what 
God is doing with us, please join us and give um, in a very sacrificial way and also give in a, in a, in without, without holding back so that God can use you to also encourage and also build up the work that he's doing here at the Kingsborough Center, both within and outside of the church. Um, so um, the, the media team are going to be showing on the screen how you can indeed give your tithe and your offering tonight. Please do respond and give into the into our account directly. And I'm going to be asking um, Pastor Christine to pray for you and pray to close the service. But before we go, I'd just like to emphasize that our theme for the month of June is going to be the title relationship. We're going to be talking about relationship in different divers, in different aspects, in different, especially on the Wednesdays um, from next Wednesday, we're going to be looking at the topic of um, how to repair broken relationships. There are relationships that we have that have been impacted negatively, that have been broken, that have been destroyed. How can we restore? How can we go to the mending shop and have those relationships, you know, repaired and have the joy of reclaiming them for God and to the glory of God? And I know that God can do something miraculous in our lives, in your life, in my life, and in our families and in our relationships. So don't forget the month of June is going to be a time of studying and looking at the direction all through the week, all through our meetings, um, the subject of relationship. And particularly on Wednesdays, we'll be looking at the subject of repairing relationships and different ways um, that that can be done. So look forward to that. And then we'll just close tonight as I invite Pastor Christine to say a prayer for us. And then we will come back and round up this service. Father, Lord, we just thank you, O oh God, even for that which you have put in our hands, Lord. And Lord, because we know that all that we have has come from you, O oh God. All we will ever have will come from you. And so, Lord, even as we give our tithe, O oh God, as we give our offering this evening, Lord, I pronounce a blessing, O oh God, even upon all the givers, O oh God. Amen. Lord, because the tithers are obeying your word and it is a covenant. Let the, even the result of that covenant, O oh God, let it be upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let blessings come upon them in manifold ways, O oh God, even as in, to meet them in, at the point of need in the name of Jesus. Father, for all those who are giving into the work of the vision, even building the future, Father, Lord, bless them even in ways, O oh God, that will surprise them in the name of Jesus. All those who are giving offering, O oh God, even out of a place of lack, even at this time of the cost of living crisis, Father, remember them in the day of trouble in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we magnify your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that beautiful prayer and blessings upon our offering. We pray that God bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we're going to listen to our announcements and the things that are coming up ahead of us um, for the month of um, June. Today is the last day of the month of May. Bye-bye to May. And we're all welcoming Tomorrow, a beautiful month of June. I hope you're looking forward to God springing you into a good experience of summer. And I pray that the blessings of God remains with you. We're going to be looking and watching the um, announcement now. And then I'm um, from the media team. And after it, we will be signing off. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And then have a wonderful June ahead of you. Bye.